Hello, this is Jeffrey Tucker, author of Bourbon for Breakfast, the second edition of which is out today from Laissez Faire Books. It's, it comes out in audiobook and in ebook, and also in a very interesting little format called a multimedia ebook, which is the text, and also, um, you know, I'm giving lectures throughout. You know, in the first first chapter, I introduced the chapter in in a video format right there on your EPUB. A very interesting innovation and new. So I'm very proud that uh, Leslie Fair chose to, to use it on, on this title. So what is this crazy book about? The title comes about from a, a, something that happened in my own life. Uh, meeting an old southern gentleman, a great scholar, who offered me bourbon uh, in my coffee at 7 a.m. in the morning, and it, and it gave rise to a series of uh, research questions that I began to ask about past patterns of drinking, and it turns out that dr morning drinking was actually very common in the past, and of course it's demonized Today, it was common in the past, first of all, because it was necessary. Uh, wine is a great way to purify water when it's dirty. Uh, a, a bourbon was put into things to, to clean it up, make it presentable, but also just, you know, it was a delightful little cultural habit. Nothing wrong with it. Of course, today, people look down on morning drinking like it's some sort of, you know, calamity and proof that uh, you're an antisocial disaster uh, and that you're headed towards doom. So that kind of set off for me a very interesting little research project. And I, when I went around trying to figure out the various ways in which the current civic ethos, that which is mostly encouraged, created by and encouraged by the state, encourages us to do things that you know we might not otherwise do and to kind of put us in a box of conventional thinking, maybe to our own personal detriment. So I began to look at household products like you know plumbing, and uh, looked at all sorts of areas of, of life, everything from you know energy and cars to food to clothing, you know everything, and tried to sort of rethink these topics as if the state didn't exist, as if power wasn't part of our lives, and we were just living normal lives as we would in a natural society with market, what's dictated by human cooperation and freedom. Well, the result is a pretty large book called Bourbon for Breakfast, and I'm very pleased with it. What I try to do is reconceive the the presentation of the relationship between market and state you know not in the form of a difficult to read economic treatise but in the form of a series of life anecdotes where I take on everyday problems and explain why it strikes me that we would be far better off without any civic culture at all at least not one created by a government which is uh, a parasitical on society and the society itself you know, is capable of self-management, which is to say individuals can run their own lives better than any outside power. Of course, that's the major theme of laissez-faire books and of the whole liberal project for the last you know, 500 years. But I try to take it, so it's an old theme, but I try to put it a new spin on it. And people have told me in the past that uh, they like the book very much, that it's the first book that they would give somebody who had never encountered these ideas before, which is a very sweet thing for, for me to hear. Very pleased that I've got a second edition. Edward Stringham, professor of economics, uh, wrote the introduction. I'm a great admirer of his. He's one of these creative young scholars who's done some marvelous work in uh, the area of stateless uh, societies. So uh, he honors me by writing the introduction to uh, my, my new edition of Bourbon for Breakfast, now available through laissez-faire books.